Good morning and welcome to worship on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. I want to thank all who helped with this worship today. A special thanks to John for editing and filming and editing this morning. We begin our worship service with the invocation. We welcome each other to worship in the name of God, our Creator and our Redeemer, who walks with us and promises to be with us every step of our lives. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is All Are Welcome. Begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Our song of mercy this morning is Kyrie Eleison.
and now receive the promise of forgiveness. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers us boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our song of praise is, You Are Holy. Let us pray the prayer of the day. God of all people, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love this world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Romans, the 11th chapter. God has not rejected Israel. Rather, the call and gifts of God are irrevocable so that while all have been disobedient, God has mercy upon all. Romans 11, 1 through 2 and 29 through 32. The Apostle Paul wrote, I ask then, as God rejected his people, by no means, I myself am am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts of, and the calling of God are irre irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they now have been disobedient in order that all by the mercy shown to you, they too may receive your mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our gospel acclamation today is, Help us, O Lord. Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by demons. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And Jesus' disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the Canaanite woman came and knelt before Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, 
It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. The Canaanite woman said, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now before I begin this message, I've got to tell you that this is one of the more difficult texts, an exceptionally hard text to preach on. And yet maybe this is a gospel that can speak to us and move us as a community of the faithful. It was after reading today's gospel from Matthew a number of times that two questions popped into my mind. Questions that just might rock our boats here. And the first question that came to me was, can Jesus learn? Now, I know that might sound a little odd and possibly controversial, for on the one hand, we may quickly answer, sure, why not? Why can't Jesus learn? Until we start worrying about the theological implications of that. For if Jesus has to learn, does that mean he's not perfect? or complete or sinless? Now, this question came to mind because at the heart of this challenging and somewhat disturbing gospel is a key interpretive question. For in today's gospel, did the Canaanite woman pass a Jesus faith test or did she persuade our Lord by way of her argument? Now, if we go with that first thought, which is probably more the traditional thought, then Jesus really didn't mean what he said. He didn't mean that he came to minister exclusively to the Israelites, nor did he mean to call this Canaanite woman a dog. Because all of what Jesus says, said was just a test. A way to bring to harvest the faithfulness that God had already planted in this Canaanite woman. And that's what a number of biblical scholars believe. And so, as those scholars who see this as a Jesus test concluded, we can favor this way of understanding this text as it saves Jesus from looking like he doesn't care about this Syrophoenician or this Canaanite woman because she's ethnically different. So by way of that understanding of this text, Jesus becomes the all-knowing faith tester. A drill sergeant, if you will, who challenges a new recruit, tearing down the mother in today's text in order to build her back up again. Now that's one way to look at the story. But there's another way. That being that Jesus' own sense of God's kingdom is challenged and stretched and enhanced by his encounter with this fierce and faithful mother. And that just maybe Jesus was serious in what he believes, that he was sent only to deal with the Israelites. And so the woman takes Jesus on and in fact persuades him that something more important is at stake here. So in this context, her great faith isn't so much an amount as it is simply the fact that she keeps pushing Jesus, pushing him and pushing him. She won't, won't let Jesus go until she gains a blessing from him, a blessing directed at her daughter. And we all know that mothers that have sick children are, that are in need can be persuasive. Now, if we go in that direction, then we believe that Jesus can learn and change. And in this text, he does. He learns that God's kingdom and his mission to enact the kingdom is bigger than he initially had imagined. And that it's more encompassing than he first dreamed. But does that mean that Jesus isn't perfect or sinless? Here's the thing. To tell you the truth, 
I think those are questions that this text isn't all that interested in answering. Rather, I truly believe that it's very possible that the gospel writers is inviting us to imagine that God's purpose is continually being unfolded for us throughout Jesus' life and ministry. And that God continues to do so as Jesus works in this world through people like you and me. As we are continually reminded in the Gospels that we are Jesus' hands and feet in the here and now. In today's Gospel, a tenacious and faithful woman who is a complete stranger to Jesus pushes Jesus hard with her motherly concerns to have Jesus reconsider, learn, and grow. And that brings us to a second question concerning today's text. Can we learn? Now I ask that question because of a conversation that I had this last week with members of our faith evangelism team. And the question that was being asked by our members is how do we get people back in our pews? It's no secret that the churches in Staples and in Cushing and just about every other city in the United States are both aging and getting smaller. And many of us are wondering what happened and what went wrong and how can we bring people back into our churches? Well, rather than answer that question directly as if I have the answers, I think I'll ask you a question. Have you asked any of the people that you wish would come back to church why they don't? And the answer to the question is almost no, I haven't. But not no, we'd never do that, or rather, it never occurred, me, occurred to me that we should ask. Which is understandable, as what we do in our churches is kind of the way we've always done things. And it's always seemed to have worked for generations not to ask questions, but just assume people are going to show up at church. Because we assume that there's only one way to do church, and that's the way it's always been done before. But taking a cue from Jesus' encounter with this woman in today's gospel, what we might do is wonder with people how what we do as a community of faith might be more engaging and helpful as they seek to connect their faith with their everyday life. Which means that if we want to learn, we first need to listen. And once we've listened, we need to be open to changing how we do church in a way that's meaningful, not only to an ever smaller, loyal group of regulars who show up on Sunday but also to those who aren't coming or those who used to come or those who might come. So here's something that I want you to think about based on today's gospel. What are some of the barriers or obstacles that are keeping our friends and neighbors from coming back to church? What barriers and obstacles do they face in their own lives? But also what barriers are we putting up as a church? Then after you thought about the church and the faith journey we abide by, go on to ask others what they think might make church more interesting, more worth getting out of bed for on a Sunday morning, more meaningful and useful to them as they try to live faithfully in this world. Because here's the thing that I know about all of us. We're all pretty good at talking about church at church. But today's gospel is a lesson that reminds us that we need to listen to learn. You see, the woman Jesus met in today's gospel and then dismissed and then learned from as a person with all kinds of needs, concerns, hurts, and interests. And the great faith she demonstrates in today's gospel is that she won't allow herself, or more importantly, her sick daughter to be dismissed. In our world today, too many people are, are too often being dismissed by the church and society. They assume sometimes based on past experiences that the church isn't really interested in them as a person who has all kinds of needs and concerns and passions. 
Rather, they believe the church sees them nothing more as a potential member who becomes a giving unit. So they have no vested interest in being as tenacious as this woman in today's gospel. And it's for that reason we need to reach out to people around us as people who have a lot to teach us. And we didn't need to do this because that's what Jesus discovered from this encounter with this woman in today's gospel. And that's what I believe Jesus wants all of us to learn from her as well. So God's blessings to each of us as we listen and learn. Amen. Our statement of faith is, I believe, I do believe.
Let us pray. Confident that God receives our joint concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. O oh God, your spirit gathers the church. Shepherd us in the proclamation of the gospel. Breathe life into ecumenical and interreligious religious endeavors and support missionaries throughout the globe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God Almighty, you created the earth and all its inhabitants and declare it good. Clean, polluted skies. Be with us as we show concern for our seas and the soil. Provide nourishment to plants and animals and make us aware of our impact on our environment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, you call leaders to bridge differences and practice generosity. Inspire all in authority to protect people in harm's way. Deliver those in bondage, support fair elections, provide care for military personnel and veterans, and show mercy to those whom they have responsibility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of health and wholeness, you provide for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Embrace people who have been rejected because of differences. Heal trauma caused by racism or prejudice. Shield any who are persecuted. Console the dying and heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, you journey with us in all of life's transitions. Guide those who are making changes in their lives. Guide our counsel at both Bethany and Faith with the vision, vision and ministry. Safeguard those who travel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. We now have a time of offering where we take the gifts that God has given us and we share them. We share them with the church and we share them with the world in need. And so thank you for your gifts to your church. Thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is Rejoice in the Mission. Peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.